Welcome to another episode of InRange. As is usually the case here at this table, I have a very interesting firearm to talk to you about today. This is the FK Brno PSD. Now, a few years back at SHOT Show on Media Day, which is absolute chaos, it's a firing line where you can't hear yourself think and everyone's rattling off at pretty much the same target, can't even tell if you're hitting it half the time. We got to see the all steel frame version of this gun and we gave it a fairly lukewarm reception. Now we got to fire a small number of rounds out of a magazine in that chaos, uh, but above and beyond that the MSRP of that steel frame gun was $7,000. And um, besides the fact that we didn't really get a chance to find out enough about it to see what we thought about it, it's hard to really justify a $7,000 price tag on any pistol in my opinion. So uh, what FK Brno has done is they've come out with this polymer version, and this version comes in at a much different MSRP of around $1,700 or $1,650 or so around there. And uh, that changes the conversation quite a bit. Now that's not to say that that's a cheap handgun. That's an expensive handgun, no doubt. But it does bring some very interesting attributes to the table, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Now, according to the literature, this gun was developed per request by soldiers in the Great War on Terror, in which they needed a second weapon, doesn't say secondary, it literally uses the term second weapon, um, on their person, whether they were in confined spaces or whatever, that would enable them to be able to engage targets reliably out to about 150 yards with reasonable terminal ballistics um, and in a small shape. And what they essentially did is they came up with this pistol in its steel incarnation, but now polymer. Um, it is really no much larger, not much larger than a standard HK full-size service pistol. But what it does do is fire the FK75 round, which is, there's a number of iterations of it and interestingly developed and designed projectiles, but ostensibly a 95 to 100 grain bullet moving at around 2,000 feet per second out of a handgun. And uh, that's no slouch whatsoever. Now, one would think that that would mean that there's a heck of a lot of recoil in this. But actually, considering what you're firing, 95 grain bullet at 2,000 feet per second, the recoil's quite reasonable. And some of the reasons for that are the basic intrinsic uh, attributes of the CZ pistol design with the low bore offset, etc. But there's a counterweight in here and being polymer, all that kind of comes together to mitigate the recoil in a way that this is a very controllable pistol in a very powerful cartridge. On top of that, the gun comes with a second barrel where you can actually just pop the barrel out, pop a barrel in, you don't change anything besides the barrel, same magazine, and you could fire standard 10 millimeter and 40 Smith & Wesson. So with this one pistol, right out of the box, you can fire the very impressive 7.5 or FK75 ammunition, swap out the barrel and switch over to 10 millimeter or 40 Smith & Wesson. So you're never really left without a handgun, assuming that you can find one of those three cartridges. There's even a nine millimeter conversion barrel, but that requires a different magazine. But for the 10 millimeter, 40 Smith & Wesson and FK75 ammunition, it's all the same magazine. I think that's pretty impressive. On top of that, it comes with two different types of iron sights, essentially a post and notch, as well as an aperture and a diamond. And it comes pre-cut with a little, a wonderfully machined cover on it that you can take off with two screws to install an RMR style uh, optic. So when you're talking about a 16 plus one round handgun firing a 95 grain bullet at 2000 feet per second with reasonably mild recoil and a cartridge that is flat shooting that makes it quite viable to actually engage and hit targets, reliably with as little effort as possible with a handgun out to 100 and 150 yards which I have done so far and actually have proven that it does do that um, this is a very compelling argument so what I'm going to walk you through on the video today is we're going to disassemble it and show you that it really is just a CZ on steroids then I'm going to go ahead and mount that hollow sun on there and I'm going to get a zero for this hollow sun because I want a closed optic I don't want an RMR style optic I want it to be closed because I plan to use this in some pretty insane conditions coming up soon. So let's come on over to the table and let's go through a field strip. So first let me take you through the basics of the handgun. It's pretty traditional in most of those regards. So we'll take the magazine out, of course, and we'll make sure that we're clear, which we are. It is a single action gun with a standard active safety. Safety's on, can't be fired. Safety off, can be fired. Trigger is quite excellent, actually. Really good trigger. And of course the safety on with the hammer down means you can't fire, nor can you actually run the slide. Very traditional in that regard. So we're gonna go ahead and take the safety off because we're gonna go through field stripping it. And field stripping it is just like really any CZ. So field stripping it, you pull the slide back and push out the slide release, pull it out. At that point, the slide should move forward, hold the barrel kind of toward the rear, and the slide just comes right off. Here's your frame, very much like a CZ on steroids, as I said. And here's your slide. 
And it does have a rather large recoil spring, as one would expect for considering what it's firing, which just depresses and comes out. And it does have this counterweight to help mitigate climb while firing from the front. And you know what? That actually works. Uh, when you're firing the gun, I, I do think this has an effect in terms of your felt recoil and the impulse of the gun to climb. But that counterweight comes out, and then you kind of pull the barrel out to an angle, tap it on a piece of wood, and the barrel comes out. And boom, you have a field stripped FK Burno 7.5. Now, PSD. If you wanted to switch barrels, so this is the 7.5 barrel. Let's put that to the side. And this is the 10 millimeter barrel. Let's take it out of this little bag right here. And as you can imagine, you just assemble it exactly in reverse of what you just did. And that's all you need to do to switch calibers. You pop it in and you have to kind of hit it. Drops on in, put the counterweight in, put the spring in. Got to line it up. That's always, this is actually the trickiest part. Harder to do on camera than in real life. There it goes. Once the spring is in, line up the guide rails, just like any other regular CZ. Then start pulling it back. Line it all up. Drop that in. The gun is now ready to fire in 10 millimeter. Same magazines, whether it's 10 millimeter, 40 Smith & Wesson or 7.5, and that 10 millimeter barrel will fire 40. So with this barrel, you can fire 10 millimeter or 40 Smith & Wesson, swap the barrel out again, you're back to 7.5. So both the front and rear sights are easily interchangeable, and I'm gonna switch them over to the diamond and aperture. There's just an Allen screw that holds it into a dovetail. I'm gonna pull that Allen screw out, set that to the side. And this slides out. Boom, front sight out. Set that to the side, and we're now going to put the new front sight in. As I said, it's a diamond. Line it up with the dovetail. If I can do that on camera. Let's line it up, and then just tension it down. really well designed in this regard. I think this is a really cool feature of the gun. All right, and now we're gonna do the same to the rear sight. So, two screws for that one. Just loosen them, I'm not gonna pull them out all the way. Didn't need to do that with the front sight, which is potential for loss. And that slides right out. And then we've got this aperture, which is what we're going for here. And slide that in, just like we slide, slid the other one out, and then tension it down. Obviously, windage adjustable. Let me try and get this lined up so it's exactly straight. Or centered, I should say. Crank on those till they're tight. And that's all there is to that. We now have a very different sight picture which is interesting because it's quick for acquisition I haven't played with this but it's something I need to play with quick for acquisition but also gives you a fine point of aim at the type of the diamond considering the environments that I'm planning on using this in I feel like this is the more resilient of the iron sights so I'm going to give this a whirl so this very nicely machined plate right here held in with two screws just pull those two screws out And this plate comes right off. It's really like Swiss machining. It's, I guess it's Czech, Czechia machining, but very well machined, high, high fit and finish. Once you pull that plate off, you can see that it's already pre-cut for a myriad of things, but it's specifically an RMR in this regard. I'm not using an RMR style mount. I'm using an acro style mount. So I have an RMR conversion plate that we're gonna put in next. Okay, so we removed the plate. And like I said, it has an RMR style cut to it, but we're gonna be using an acro style optic because I don't want an open optic in the environment that I'm gonna be using this in. So for this, we have to put on a conversion plate and that's what's right here. This comes with the hollow sun. So first you put in your pins 
your little RMR stabilizing pins into the pistol. It comes with that. And then you line the plate up. Oh, I did that in reverse. Line that up, and then the screws go in. And then we mount the optic. We are good to go. I'm at the two gun action challenge match because what's the best way to confirm a claim except on the clock? And the claim made by FK Berno is that this pistol was designed that in a pinch to replace both your pistol and your rifle or your carbine. So what I'm going to do today, by the way, this is a really cool rig that I'm testing out from Whiskey 2.4 um, and it wasn't designed to do this, but man, it works out for this. This pouch perfectly holds the FK Berno BSD. And so what I'm going to do today is shoot all three stages with this one gun. This is a two gun match. Usually it's rifle and pistol. Today we have two rifle stages and one pistol stage. I'm gonna shoot the whole thing with this under that guise that this can, in a pinch, replace your rifle. Now, I think the cartridge demonstrably is possible to do that. You're talking about a 95 grain bullet at 2,000 feet per second, very flat shooting. We've got targets today out past 100 yards, about 125 yards. And then of course we've got a fairly difficult pistol stage as well, mixed in with another rifle stage. So what I want to find out is, can this do that claim? Now, I have relatively limited trigger time on this. I've essentially fired it in one match. I just got this zeroed. I need to practice with this gun a lot more. So I'm not going to say that today is going to be my definitive results possible with this pistol. But what I want to do today is find out, can I at least complete, not win, complete all three stages today with just this, this pistol, for both two rifle and one pistol stage? Let's find out. Your high right. You're just a little off to the left. Off to the left? Slightly. Just under it.
Bye. All right, so on the medium range stage, well, medium range for us today, past 125 yards. I did complete the stage with this pistol only. I had to aim a little low and left, meaning my zero is not quite right. And like I said, it's going to take time for me to fine tune it. Um, something you don't, shouldn't, and generally don't do with the match is change your sight settings at the match. And after that stage, after it was able to reliably hit high and right, guess what I did? It changed it. The next stage was our 50 yard rifle stage, and I should not have changed it. Um, and you'll see that reflected in the video, uh, or did see it reflected in the video. That said, I still finished the second rifle stage, pistol only. Then we got to the pistol stage and slammed the pistol stage, no problem whatsoever with this. And that cartridge really does a job on the spinner, as you probably saw. So I think it requires a lot more work, and I need to take, spend more time with this gun to become truly proficient with it. They do have a brace that's coming out for this, which I think would change things a lot. In fact, you can put it, put it center of chest and use the gun essentially like an isosceles, not necessarily your chin on the brace, but actually it just braces against you. I think that's a really clever idea, and you can holster the gun with the brace on it. We're going to see a future video with that here on in-range. But um, the optic ran fine. Nothing came loose once I did the Loctite, as I said earlier. And so the experiment was not to win the match, but could I complete all three stages, two rifle, one pistol stage, with just this pistol in the FK75 cartridge, as they claim? Now, and the answer is yes. But I'm going to do a lot more work with this 7.5 cartridge, and I want to push this out to range. I want to see if I can reliably hit out to 200 with this in future videos, probably with the brace. But I'm going to go ahead and say, so far I am very impressed with this pistol, very impressed with the cartridge, very impressed with the trigger, the recoil, the handling. Um, the reliability has been excellent, and uh, I think the claim's true. Uh, would I take this over a rifle if I could have a rifle? No. but. In situations where you can't carry a rifle, but you want rifle-like capabilities, at least out to 100, 150 yards at this point, I'm going to say, once you've done your homework with this, and have a properly zeroed sight, this gun can do what they claim. While, I, in full disclosure, they did send me this pistol, that does not mean that you're going to get a good review. It just means you sent me something. In this regard, I am giving this a good review. However, the ammunition today, which is not cheap, as you can imagine, during our uh, global calamity, um, was all purchased by supporters like you. Thank you for keeping InRange alive. If you already are one, you really are amazing. If you'd like to consider it, you can find us at patreon.com slash inrange TV. And if you can't totally understand, just subscribe to one of our multiple distribution points. You can find them all inrange.tv slash watch. Not only on YouTube, more importantly though, fight the algorithm. Leave a comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.